I've come down to the park today with my kids and I've taken the opportunity to share with you all about acute lower back pain. I asked lots of physicians and clinicians on my social media accounts, what do you wish everyone knew about back pain? And I asked everyone, what do you, questions do you have? Do you wish you knew? And I've correlated all this information together so I can share with you all my top information all about how to manage and when to worry and when not to worry about acute lower back pain. Okay, so management. Right, the first thing you need to do is obviously get some sort of painkiller on board, although I hate the term painkiller because it suggests it's going to take all the pain away when really it's just going to relieve the pain. And this is important so that you can get moving. So something like an ibuprofen or anti-inflammatory similar to that, if you can take it, is going to be the most useful thing. And this is because rather than the temptation of staying on the sofa or you know in bed because it hurts too much to move, is you actually have to keep moving. Now, it may be sore at first and that's normal, but it's important to know that pain is a bit of an unusual thing. Pain doesn't always equal harm. It's there as a protective mechanism to prevent damage. So it doesn't mean there's necessarily tissue damage going on now just because there's pain. So don't overdo it. Start gradually and build up. But it is really important for you to stretch and move and that is the best form of treatment you're going to have. There's no one best way of doing it. Uh, back pain can be caused by a multitude of factors and so different exercises and stretches work differently. Try a few, see what works best for you. Or if there's a form of exercise that keeps you happy and fit and well, then keep doing that and that will also help prevent further back problems. I will give you some examples of some simple back stretches to do at the end of the video, so keep watching if you want to see those. Other things you can do to help is some ice, get that on your back. Some people also try heat packs, try both, see what works best for you. Some people try foam roll, there's not really great evidence for them, but if you want to give it a whirl and it works well for you, then that's fine. And KT tape, same thing, not great evidence, but if it helps you, then fine, because it's not going to do any harm. So over 98% of these simple cases of back pain are going to recover quite quickly. So we call acute back pain anything that lasts up to 12 weeks and chronic back pain anything that goes on longer than 12 weeks. Of course, you can get repeated episodes of acute back pain. So when pain goes on longer than 12 weeks, it gets a bit more complicated. There's often problems with the body being too sensitive and creating pain when there isn't actually tissue damage. I would suggest you have a look at my video all about chronic pain to find out a bit more about that. Sometimes you do need to speak to your GP surgery to get some stronger painkillers on board if the simple stuff you get from the pharmacy isn't enough. The other thing you might be able to do is book directly in with the first contact physio if your back pain is not better after, for example, six to eight weeks. Now, these physios are brilliant. They're provided by the NHS and they are musculoskeletal specialists. They can help assess you, advise you on exercises and stretches to do. Some of them give injections, steroid injections. They can liaise with uh, what's called the mus musculoskeletal clinic so I can't praise them enough I think they're fantastic so if you can get an appointment with one of them then well done you that would be great obviously you can see a physio um, privately if you want to pay for it if you've got a recommendation and um, people have also asked me about the difference between osteopaths and chiropractors and physios traditionally it's thought of that physios are more muscle first and then joint whereas osteopaths and chiropractors are joint first and then muscle and chiropractors and osteopaths often use manual therapy a bit more as well but if someone's been recommended to you then feel free to try them there's often a lot of overlap a lot of people wonder if they need an MRI scan or some sort of imaging and often actually disappointed that when one isn't ordered for them. But actually, um, this is because MRI scans are really useful for some indications. For example, if we're worried there might be a cancer and x-rays can be really useful if we're worried there might be a fracture. But in most cases, we do not need a scan. In fact, scans can be actually unhelpful. And that's because they're so good now, they can show up all sorts of little problems that actually aren't really related to the pain you're having. They're not a pain scan. So in some cases, someone can have a normal MRI scan and actually have masses of pain and be really disappointed. And in some cases, someone can have a really abnormal scan and not have pain. We know that 50% of people over 40 have things like disc protrusions on their scans and degeneration of the spine and it sounds really scary and actually using that, that terminology often puts people off doing things that we know is going to help them so they say things like well I can't lift that box or I can't go to the gym or I can't go swimming because I've got this disc degeneration or I've got this you know slip disc so actually what's really important is if you've been assessed and seen a clinician they haven't sent you for any imaging that's good news chances are your back will get better by itself some people do need to go on to have further treatment. So this may involve injections in and around the spine or it may even involve spinal surgery. 
and of Obviously, this is going to have significant side effects and include significant risks. So the best thing to do is focus on avoiding that by having all the exercises and stretching that we've talked about already and focusing on making your back really strong and stable. Even for those people who have had injections or maybe surgery as well, they also still need to focus on that simple, basic, keeping the back strong and stable and moving and exercising. I think it's also really important to break down some really common myths about lower back pain. Firstly, about moving and handling. We're often kind of made to feel really fearful about this, but actually moving and handling is really important to keep a back strong. So there's a lot of poor evidence about how you've got to move specifically and keep yourself in certain structures. I would say don't worry too much about that. The second thing I would say is that there's the idea that a weak core gives you a bad back. And apparently that's not really too true. In fact, trying to kind of remain tense all the time isn't going to be very useful. So just move normally, relax and breathe as you're doing any lifting. That's actually the best thing to do. It's really important that I do explain to you some what we call red flags. And these are symptoms or signs that may suggest there's something much more serious going on. So this is rare, but just important to be aware of. I would say if you've got back pain and you're feeling really unwell with a high fever, then you do need to seek urgent attention. Also, if you've had back pain and are losing weight unintentionally, then please do speak to your GP surgery and get an appointment to discuss that. There are some signs about something called Corda Equina Syndrome, and if these signs happen, then you would need to get yourself over to A&E pretty quickly. So this includes things like having numbness where you wipe your bottom, having sciatica type pains down the backs of both legs, having new weakness of your legs, struggling to open your bowels or pass urine, or having sexual dysfunction. If you have those things, then as I say, do get checked out very quickly. So my key takeaway points that I want you to remember are your back is a robust structure. It's designed to move and bend and stretch. So exercise is the most important thing you can do. And most people do not require an MRI scan. Hope you found that helpful. Do keep watching if you want to see a few examples of some stretches you might like to try. And have a look at my YouTube channel for any of my other videos you may find useful. So here are some exercises you can try at home for your back pain, both laid down and seated. First we'll try laid down. Now this one's called knees to chest, lie on your back with your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor. Bring one knee up and use your hands to pull it gently towards your chest. Hold the leg in position for five seconds then relax. You might want to do it on the other knee and try about five times on each side. This time same position, roll your knees to one side keeping your shoulders flat on the bed or floor and hold for 10 seconds. Roll your knees back to the starting position then roll over to the other side and repeat. You want to do this exercise about three times on each side. For this next one you're going to be on your front. Look down and keep your neck straight, slowly push down on your hands and arch your back up, keeping your hips on the floor or bed. Hold for 5 to 10 seconds, then go back to the starting position. Gradually build up so you're able to repeat this exercise 10 times. If you do struggle to fully straighten your arms, start by arching your back halfway and resting on your elbows. On your hands and knees for the next one, making sure your hands are under your shoulders and your knees are under your hips. Arch your back upwards and let your head drop down. Hold for about 5 seconds, then back into the starting position. Slowly lift your head up while relaxing your tummy and sticking your bottom out. Try and hold for 5 seconds and then repeat about 5 more times. And in a seated position with your feet firmly planted on the floor and your knees at a 90 degree angle, you're going to be arching your back and then reversing, inhaling, rolling your shoulders forward and pull your belly button towards your spine. This is really great for spinal flexibility. The next one you're going to curl your chin down to your chest and slowly imagine your vertebrate by vertebrate bending and curling over. You might be able to go as far as I can, that's okay, just go as far as you feel comfortable. And then reverse, again imagining vertebrate by vertebrate straightening back up with your head coming up last. For this next one, cross your leg over your other leg and hold and twist. You're doing a gentle stretch to the side, try and hold for about 10 seconds if you can and then repeat on the other side. And it would massively help guys if you could click like and subscribe and turn the notifications on so you can keep up to date with any of my new videos. Thanks for watching.